Hi everyone, my name is Lane McConnell, uh, and I'm going to be your instructor this semester for Math 1350, Introduction to Statistics. Um, this video is just meant to give you an overview of the course, give you a sense of what the expectations are, what the workload's going to be like, and kind of an outline of the topics that we're going to cover and, and a schedule for the semester. Uh, I want to start off by just going through the syllabus here. Um, this is available to you in Brightspace uh, under the top overview and syllabus section. So if you want to refer back to it at any point, that's where you can find it, top of the page there. Um, my contact information is in here. The best way to get in touch with me is going to be via email. Uh, I check it pretty much constantly throughout the day on most work days, uh, unless I'm in the classroom teaching. Um, so the best way to get a fast response from me is to shoot me an email. My email is right here, lmcconnell6 at cnm.edu. Um, just double check it if you use the directory. Confusingly enough, I actually have a cousin with the same first name. He's a student at CNM. And so I, in the past, he's gotten some emails that were intended for me. So just make sure you double check what the email is before you send an email. Um, I'm going to have office hours for this class online via Zoom on Mondays from 2 to 3 in the afternoon. Uh, the link to that Zoom um, meeting is under the course information section in Brightspace. If you have any trouble finding it, just shoot me an email and I can direct you to it. Um, I know that this is kind of in the middle of the day, and so for some of you that are working, these might not be convenient hours to try to meet up uh, for office hours. So if you send me an email, I'm happy to schedule, you know, an appointment outside of these hours as well on kind of a, you know, case by case basis. So don't hesitate if these hours don't work. Uh, I'm more than happy to try to meet with you otherwise. I'm also would like to encourage you to seek out um, and utilize the tutoring services that CNM offers. Uh, the ACE Tutoring Center is great. There's a number of tutors that they have full time. Um, that are wonderful for helping in statistics. And they're open from, I want to say, like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Thursday. And then they have shorter hours on Friday and Saturday. But they're open, um, you know, a lot. And so there's a lot of chances, or there's a, they have a lot of opportunity for you to seek out help that way. So if you want infor more, more information on that, um, just send me an email. I'd be happy to direct you there as well. Um, <clears throat> So this class is about statistics. I'm going to spare you my spiel on statistics. You'll hear it in the first sort of lecture video anyways. Um, but basically, we're going to be talking about um, one major concept throughout the semester. Uh, and it's this idea that statistics is sort of this study that allows us to look backward and collect data from things that have already happened. and then. Uh, conjoin this with the concept of probability, which is forward-looking, trying to make predictions for what's going to happen in the future. And that theme will come up throughout the course using backwards-looking information to try to make predictions in a forward-looking direction. Um, and it's one of the cool things about this course. So I, I'm not going to, again, give you any more than that here. You'll hear plenty in my other videos. Um, but that's kind of going to be the theme of the course. There's a bunch of individual topics that you can go through right now. We, we spell them out in the syllabus, but if you read through these, there's a lot of jargon. You might not know what most of these words mean, and that's totally fine. But by the end of the semester, this is all of the stuff that we're going to cover. Uh, so for now, don't worry about it, but at the end of the semester, you can probably look back on this and hopefully we'll recognize most of this information. Um, we're going to be using a textbook that you have already paid for. Uh, so as part of registering for this class, there was an additional course fee when you registered, and that was the cost of the textbook and the homework system that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using um, a textbook called Elementary Statistics by the authors Navidi and Monk, uh, and we're going to be using Connect Math as the system that we're going to use our homework in. So if you've taken another math class that used um, an online homework system, maybe it was Connect Math. It's relatively straightforward to use. Um, there are some really nice features that allow you to look at examples, um, access the relevant portion of the textbook for a given homework problem that you're working on, um, and you can even message me directly through Connect Math, and it'll show me 
the exact problem that you're working on with the exact numbers that you're using and anything that you've entered in so I can try to help you along if you have questions. So um, again, you shouldn't need to buy any textbook. It's already been paid for. Um, the only alternative is if you really hate reading an ebook, an online version, you might want to spring for um, the loose leaf version. They have a printed version at the bookstore, but I want to say they cost $30 or something for the, for the hard copy. My hope is that if you watch the videos that I provide, um, they're lecture videos that I've created covering the material that I think is important and most relevant for the course. And if you watch those, they'll cover 90% of the problems that show up in the homework. And you might not really need to open the textbook too much unless you, you know, really prefer getting your information via reading. Um, we're going to be taking exams online in this class. And this is going to be probably one of the jankiest parts of this, this course. We're going to be using something called Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor, and uh, it's kind of invasive. It feels, from your end, it feels invasive because essentially what you're going to do is record yourself taking exams. Um, and this is just a requirement from CNM that allows our math classes to transfer to other institutions. Uh, most other institutions will not accept our credits for math classes specifically unless those exams are proctored. And so this is our, our means of uh, fulfilling that requirement. Again, I don't really like it. Um, as an alternative, if you really are uncomfortable with this idea, you will also have the option this semester of coming onto campus for the exams and taking the exams in person at the assessment center, um, which if in the past you might've gone to the assessment center um, to take like a placement exam of some sort. Uh, you may be familiar with it for from something in the past like that. Um, if you have any questions about that, just email me, you know, sufficiently before the exam, maybe a week before the exam, and we can make sure that there are arrangements so that you don't have to use this Respondus lockdown browser and monitor where you don't have to record yourself. You'll just go there and you'll take it on one of their computers um, and you won't need to record yourself. Um, the exams that we're going to take are going to be pencil and paper. So I'm trying to replicate an in-person exam experience that allows me to give partial credit on problems. And it's not just simply like a multiple choice or fill in the blank where you're either right or you're wrong, credit or no credit. Um, and so we'll have a practice of that uh, probably in the second week of the class. Essentially what you will do is log into this Respondus Lockdown browser click on a link that will open up the exam and you will have your own paper and pencil and you will write down your answers as though you were doing an in-class exam and that is what you will ultimately submit. So you'll record yourself taking the exam with pencil and paper. After the exam is over, you'll close it and you will either scan your work, all the work that you just did on that paper, or if you don't have a scanner, you can just use your, your phone or a camera to take a picture and then upload your um, scanned or picture uh, of your exam in a separate assignment online. And so the process is a little bit clunky, um, but I think it's the best way that I've found so far um, to kind of replicate an in-class exam experience and allow me to give you some partial credit um, on the exams. So uh, again, we'll have a practice for that that's no stakes, it's not a real exam, it's just kind of a practice for what that process looks like of how do you open the exam, how do you write something down, make sure that you've got the appropriate app on your on your phone to be able to, you know, snap a picture of your exam and convert it into a PDF to upload, stuff like that. So again, we'll see more of that in week two, and if you have any questions when we get to that point, don't hesitate to shoot me an email and I can try to kind of guide you through that process a little bit more carefully. Um, although I think the instructions I've written out for it are pretty clear, so we'll see. Um, one other big expense in this class is a graphing calculator. And I have it as required here in the syllabus. That's to ensure that if you are on um, the GI Bill or if you are a dual credit student, um, that you have a scholarship of some sort that covers, you know, course materials, they will pay for it. The reality is it's not 100% required. I'd still strongly recommend using 
this specific TI-84 graphing calculator because I have lots of videos throughout the semester that shows you how to do problems using that specific calculator. It doesn't have to be a TI-84 if you have an older TI-83 or a TI-86 or any variation of these. They have plus ones, color, all of these various things. If you have a TI graphing calculator, it's going to be good for this, um, for this purpose. If you have a different graphing calculator, a Casio, HP make graphing calculators, those also have the same functionality and those will work well, um, but the directions will differ from what I have in my videos. Um, I would recommend at the very least, even if you're not going to purchase a calculator, to um, download, if you have a smartphone or some sort of uh, device, download one of these two apps. So there's one called Wabbit Emu for Android, and you can actually download it onto a PC uh, and use it there as well. I'll be using the, the PC version, and it emulates the graphing calculator. Basically, it has a picture of the calculator in front of you, and it functions the exact same way. Um, and that'll give you a guide for like, you know, it'll be perfect for homeworks to use something like that. Um, iPhone, there's one called Graphen Calc 83. It is not free, but I want to say it's like $5.99 or something like that. It's relatively cheap. It's worth downloading just for um, the homework assignments that we'll use throughout the semester. Um, for the real exams, when you're sitting at your computer on Respondus Lockdown Browser, I'm not allowed to let you use your phone um, for obvious cheating purposes. Um, so I would recommend, if you can, either trying to borrow a graphing calculator or as an alternative, I will have um, problems that you can do using uh, a spreadsheet instead. And there's a built-in spreadsheet in the lockdown browser that'll allow you to circumvent. You don't need the graphing calculator to do any of the problems, um, but it can come in handy. The spreadsheet will work as well. So. We'll talk again more about all of these things as we get closer to actually doing exams, but just keep this in mind. If this is something, if you can find somebody that already has one of these graphing calculators and you can borrow it for the semester or even just borrow it during exams and use the app in the meantime, that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, I'm not going to require it because I don't want to force you to go out and purchase one of these things that cost like 100 and 110 bucks or something like that. They're not cheap. You might be able to find them cheaper, you know, on online on Amazon or or even on Craigslist or Facebook or you know find a used version. Um, but it is a big expense, so I'm not requiring it, but I am strongly recommending it. If you have any doubts about your math abilities, the calculator is going to probably um, make life a lot easier for you. So I'd strongly recommend it in that case. Uh, so again, if you have any questions about the calculator, shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to discuss it with you further. Um, attendance, obviously, this is an online class, so you just need to participate. Um, there's no real-time, like, face-to-face -face meetings or required Zoom meetings or anything like that. The format of the class is that basically on a week-by-week -week basis, I will post a bunch of lecture videos for that week, covering all the relevant topics for that week. You'll watch those on your own time. They're just posted on YouTube. Um, they can be a little bit long. Uh, I I know that they're long. They're they're basically the length of a normal class period, so they're often like an hour and 15 minutes long. Um, utilize the YouTube controls and watch it at, you know, one and a half times speed or something if, if you want to, to get through it a little faster. But if you watch those videos, it should cover almost everything you need to be able to get through the homework. The homework is going to be in Connect Math, as I mentioned earlier, and you'll have anywhere from maybe five up to more more likely about 10 problems per section that we cover. And in a given week, we cover anywhere from two to three sections of the textbook. Um, so in a given week, your homework is going to be, you know, 20-ish to 30-ish Connect Math problems. Um, they can sometimes get a little bit repetitive. Uh, and so what I've done when it comes to homework, let me sneak down to here, get through all of this. Yada, yada, yada. Here we go. Grading policy. When it comes to the homework, which is, as I mentioned, uh, in Connect Math, I'm not going to require you to get 100% credit on the homework in order to actually earn 100% credit at the end of the semester. So the sentence down here is what I'm talking about. For Connect Math homework, 
I want you to maintain an 80% average. And so in Connect Math, it'll show your overall average. Maybe you got 100% on some assignments, you only got a 50% on some assignments. Totally fine as long as your overall average is above an 80%, 80 or higher. At the end of the semester, I'll round that all the way up to 100%, give you full credit uh, on the homework. So this will allow you to either occasionally skip a section of homework on a really busy week, or at least skip individual problems if they're feeling very repetitive. Or in a few cases, Connect Math can be kind of finicky, and they can just be very picky about, you know, if you're trying to graph something and your point is off by like one pixel on the screen, it'll mark you wrong. Uh, so if you get frustrated with any of the Connect Math controls and you think you understand the concept of the problem, skip the problem. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt your grade at the end of the day. As long as your overall average stays above an 80, I will give you 100% credit at the end of the semester when I compute final grades. Speaking of grades, that's probably the other important thing that everybody cares about. Here's what makes up your grades. Uh, the homework is huge. It's worth 30% of your grade. And that requirement of only making you get an 80% in order to achieve a full 100% of that 30% of your grade, if that makes sense, um, makes it so that it gives you a huge cushion when it comes time to exams. Um, so the exams are worth 30% and the homework is worth 30%. So if you ace the homework, it gives you a big cushion on the exams. Um, in fact, I don't like to usually lead with this, but if you bomb an exam in this class that's worth 15% of your grade, it's not gonna kill your final, final grade at all. Um, you can average on the exams, including the final exam, like a 57-ish, 58%, so a strong F. Um, and if you have full credit on the homework, and full credit on participation, you you know complete the appropriate discussion posts, which we're only going to have like one or two, um, and you stay on task, and you do well on the project that we're going to have at the end of the semester. If you stay on top of all those other things and get full credit on them, you only need like a 58% on the exams to get a C in the class, to pass the class. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're worried about you bombed an exam, don't freak out. Don't run and drop the class immediately. Send me an email if you're concerned. But um, again, staying on top of the homework really does give you a cushion on, on the exam grades. So keep that in mind. Um, and so this is the overall layout. Again, I can read it out loud to you, I guess, but you can read it for yourselves. Homework is 30%. Participation is just 5%. Uh, exams, we have two midterm exams that we'll see in the schedule in just a minute when those happen. Those are 15% each or 30% total, so they match the weight of the homework. We're going to have one project at the end of the towards the end of the semester, the last couple of weeks, and that's worth 10% of your grade. It's a pretty short project. It shouldn't take most people more than a few hours, so don't freak out about having some giant project hanging over you at the end of the semester. It's not a huge time commitment. And then lastly, we have a final exam. Uh, the last week of class, and that's going to be worth 25% of your grade. So that's how the grade's going to be calculated. Um, coming back up here, just a few other important things that I kind of glossed over. I generally don't drop you, so if I see you not attending or not participating, not submitting homeworks, don't expect me to drop you. If you want to drop the class, if you're done, feeling you know done or something comes up, Try to communicate with me if you can, um, but it's up to you to actually drop the class. As far as dropping goes, here are the relevant date, dates in order to drop. If you drop within the first two weeks, so by January 24th, um, it's like you never took the class. You don't. It doesn't go on your record as a, as a withdrawal. You get a refund. Um, so January 24th is the date for that. After that date passes, if you drop the class, you have to take a W. Um, you can also change your grading option to either credit, no credit, or audit um, by filling out the appropriate paperwork. The deadline for that is at the towards the end of March, so about a month before the class ends. Um, so just keep those minds or those dates in mind, and I'll try to remind you as we get closer to those dates that they're that they're coming up. Um, Again, most of you will not be on campus, but if you do decide to come to campus to take the exams, you'll want to read through this COVID policy um, and what the requirements are to be able to come on campus to actually take those exams. So read through that if you're not familiar with uh, CNM's COVID policy. And otherwise, 
all the normal stuff they want us to put in here. Uh, I think the only real important one of these, again, because it's mostly an online class, so classroom disruption and smoking on campus, these things aren't going to make as big of a difference. But the disability statement, if you do have um, uh, recognized accommodations by, from the um, Disability Resource Center at CNM, and you want to utilize any sort of um, accommodations during exam testing and so on and so forth, just get in touch with me towards the beginning of the semester here before any of those exams come up so we can um, figure out the appropriate plan for all of that. Um, otherwise, the last thing that I want you to take a look at is the schedule for the class on a week-by-week -week basis. Here are the topics that we're going to be covering. Um, all of this will be outlined, I think, pretty clearly in Brightspace. Um, the way I have it set up in there is I'll have an actual checklist for you to go through on any given week to make sure that you're not missing or accidentally forgetting an assignment or something like that. But each one of these sections will have a corresponding video um, or possibly more than one corresponding video. Sometimes I'll do video for the section and then a separate video for like how to do the homework problems using technology, using calculator, using Excel. Um, and so You'll watch those videos, you'll do the homework. The homework in general is gonna be due the Tuesday of the following week. So I think I mentioned that somewhere in the grading thing. Where was that? Right here. So Tuesdays, 11.59 p.m. is when homework's gonna be due. So this first week, your homework uh, isn't due until next week on Tuesday. And it'll be like that going forward. Um, so the material for one week, the homework for that week will be due Tuesday of the following week. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and again, all those dates will be all over the place in Brightspace, so hopefully it'll be hard to miss. Um, again, we have two exams. The first one isn't until week six, and it'll cover the first five chapters of material. Then we'll have a second exam during week 11, covering the interim material in between those two. And then we'll have a final exam at the end of the semester. Um, and we have one built-in week here to allow us to have some extra review, ha allow you to get have time without extra homework or anything, and to work on your final projects, um, or if there's any need to, for some reason, make up any material um, throughout the semester. So we've got one buffer week in there, uh, but this is what the schedule looks like. I also wanted to point out that there are going to be two extra credit sections of homework. Um, I don't have lecture videos for these, uh, they're pretty straightforward, so it's section 4.3 in week 4 and section 5.3 in week 5. If you choose to do the homeworks for those sections, they're extra credit. Um, so take a look at those, and you can kind of decide if that's worth your time once you get there. Um, but otherwise, if you have any additional questions about the setup of this course, uh, again, shoot me an email, um, request a Zoom meeting, get in touch with me. I try to be as responsive as I can. Usually that means I'll respond to you right away if I'm sitting at my desk and I get the email. Um, worst case scenario, maybe 24 hours before I respond to you. Um, and occasionally, occasionally on a weekend, if I go out of town or if I'm camping or something, I might be out of you know email range for 48 hours. But that's pretty rare, and I'll try to warn you guys in advance if something like that's going to happen. Um, but otherwise... <laughs> Good luck this semester. Uh, it's going to be some hard work, but don't get discouraged. And if you feel along along the way that you have any questions or any concerns or anything at all, get in touch with me, and I'm more than happy to work with you. You know, stuff is going to happen. Life comes up during, especially now during COVID, right? So if you get sick, uh, if you have to take care of a family member, or if something happens at work and you're having to cover extra shifts, just let me know. Just keep me in the loop, and I'll do what I can to accommodate you guys. Uh, Otherwise, good luck.